Hi, we're just waiting for everybody to join the webinar. So we'll just give it another couple of minutes, then we'll look to get going. Thank you. Uh, we'll just give it one more minute. We can see uh, a few people joining now. Uh, one more minute and then we'll get going. Right, I can see that a few more attendees have joined and we're now coming up to sort of four minutes past. So we'll, we'll look to make a start. Okay, thank you everybody for attending uh, this original software webinar, part of one of the series that we're running every month uh, this year. And the title of this webinar is Scrap the Spreadsheet and Up Your UAT Game. So to start off with, uh, let's introduce today's speakers. That's myself, Jonathan Pearson. Uh, I'm product manager with, with Original Software. I've been with the company for over a decade and I've been in IT for nearly 30 years, uh, which is too long for anybody, I think. Well, there you go. Um, um, my colleague, Carl Andrews, I will allow, uh, I will say, introduce himself now. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, hi, everybody. Um, yeah. Pleasure to be on the webinar today uh, and nice to see some uh, some customers along with some new faces. Uh, as it says there, uh, Carl Andrews, Head of Sales for Original Software, uh, recently joined the company um, six weeks ago. So a great opportunity for me to understand and, you know, hear some questions from some of our customers, uh, along with, you know, some of the new names that are on the webinar today. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. So just before we get going, um, you know, typical housekeeping, just to ensure that um, we are all on mute and I'm sure that we are, um, some of us are working from home these days. So the sound of the dogs and cats and kids coming home from school, so forth in the background. Um, we are recording the session, so that will be sent out um, afterwards and we are monitoring the chat as well. So as we go through, please, um, you know, submit the questions as we go through. The webinar should be 15 to 20 minutes uh, and then we've got sort of, you know, a good 10 minutes for any questions at the end. So just before we get uh, we get going and um, just to sort of set the scene, obviously user acceptance testing, we, we all know it's a critical element to any um, successful software change. And, and typically it's one that's sometimes forgotten about from a planning, from an execution point of view, and generally done towards that end of the project. And guess what? Everybody else has eaten up that lead time, so we don't have the time that we want necessarily to go and execute the way we might, we might uh, want to. And there are many different reasons. Some of the reasons for that is some of the you know, neglect, lack of tools, technology um, that support UAT, um, and hence why 
I know I have in the past, and I'm sure we all have, resorted to spreadsheets to bring some organisation to what might be the chaos. Um, yes, they are cumbersome. Yes, it can be inefficient. Um, but are they doing more harm than good? And what I mean by that is that, that sort of that rekeying of data, no, no, no signal, single source of the truth. Um, is it a single point of failure? I know in a very large PLC and many moons back, um, yes, we were managing a, a large process with Excel, um, but actually there's links in it and those links broke and Johnny had left the business. So in essence, I'm sure we've all been there. I'm sure we've all heard the stories. <clears throat> Um, but fortunately now, obviously, as technology has moved on, yes, there are better tools, uh, better practices out there. And hopefully we're going to deem some of that some of that today, um, not just saving time and money. Yes, it does save time and money, but fundamentally mitigating business risk. Um, and, and I'm sure we've read all of the all of the stories and certainly in the UK, two large banking organizations that released updates to their business systems that took business systems down, you know, cost those organizations millions of pounds, um, you know, and factor into that then consumer confidence against the brand. Yeah, we've all seen the stories and fundamentally those good businesses today have got digital strategies at the, you know, at the corporate level, which underpins with, with user acceptance testing. So uh, yeah, Johnny's going to take us through, um, you know, a few things now. So, uh, so back to you, Johnny. Thank you, um, Carl. Yeah. Um, so the very high level quickly go through the agenda that we're going to go through today. We're going to look at the situation as we see it at the moment with regards to UAT. Uh, we're going to look at how that can translate into uh, the loss of time, uh, the inefficiencies of use. Uh, and then we're going to start to take a turn. We're going to, after we've explained what the situation currently is, we'll look at if there are any better ways that we can move through and make this happen. Um, we expect the uh, presentation to last 10, 15 minutes. So we'll, we'll see how far we get. So um, I don't know whether you've seen this photograph. It was taken by a Mexican photographer called Alejandro recently. Um, and it's a picture of a roadrunner um, against the US-Mexico border wall. Um, why is this here? We're talking about UAT, not photography. Well, even though that this won the grand prize for the bird photography of the year competition, um, it's actually how many people feel when, um, or application owners specifically feel when faced with getting your UAT done. Um, so why is this? I mean, in general, as alluded to by Carl, UAT is done at the end. Now, unfortunately, um, even if the development was done on agile methodology, coming to the end here, the delivery date won't change, but the time is always squeezed. It's the old story of, you know, we want to get this done, um, but we have to deliver on this date. You've only got a week. I know we said you could have three weeks, but you've only got a week. So um, generally, it's time squeeze often seen by management as less important as the work for dev um, and QA. Uh, the attitude of, look, it's already been done, it's working, why do we need other people to look at it? So it's a misunderstanding there. And, and also unsuitable products, we're, we're focusing on the spreadsheet, which we see a lot, but it's not just the spreadsheet, it could be uh, you're trying to use project tools to manage UAT, um, or you're trying to use QA tools. A lot of the QA tools, especially the older ones, are just not um, suitable they're not set up to run UAT and um, they're set up to run a technical QA process um, and they may not be scalable they may not be um, as easy to give to everybody who needs it to get the job done so the situation we come across actually is is um, a bit in pieces at the moment and there seems to be no general hole to to bring all of this together so you know what does that translate to we're going to look at a few specific points of uh, time consuming people often don't realize that the UAT phase is one of the most time consuming areas uh, of the entire development process you have to bring in lots of different people uh, from lots of different departments many whom haven't worked with each other uh, before um, and just to get the communication right across that is, is huge, uh, but when the time pressure is there to finish and go live is at its greatest, it, it, it's um, a place where we should be investing in trying to get more efficiency, um, but often we don't. Um, sharing and access is a big one, and, it, and especially when it comes to things like spreadsheets. So, you know, you can use them to document 
test cases and steps. Uh, but what happens when somebody copies one into an area where another team don't have access to, um, or even worse, they copy it and one team's using one version and another team's using another version. Um, it can lead to all sorts of errors, duplications, uh, inability to reuse assets. So it can make this area incredibly inefficient. And then standardization of results. So th this is kind of one of the biggest headaches and most painful aspects of, of not using modern UAT solutions. Uh, the time spent by users copying and pasting screenshots, sometimes where necessary, sometimes where not necessary, putting them into spreadsheets, which all of a sudden going from kilobytes moving to gigabytes that can no longer be copied even if you wanted to. Um, but probably more importantly, the data collected is generally incomplete. Um, it leaves critical holes in the audit trail. Uh, or diagnostics that are required to, to fix the problems. And you know, you always get some people will fill in lots of information, some people will just do a one-liner. Uh, with the centralization issue on top of that, you may actually, people don't even use the spreadsheet because they've got no access to it and you end up doing emails with Word documents um, and some screenshots. And the whole thing turns into a bit of a wild west free-for-all um, and traceability just goes out the window. You can never tell where an issue has come from uh, when it comes to a requirement that was originally done, who the stakeholders were, and all that type of, of information. So time issues, it's this is really what contributes to, to the, the aspects of it not being as efficient as it could be when you're using tools that are not designed for the job or spreadsheets. So if we further look at these inefficiencies, as we mentioned, I mean, expression is important, especially when it comes to UAT, it perfectly valid for a user to go through and say, actually, I don't like the color of this. It doesn't fit with the rest of the system. It hurts my eyes. Um, it's not what we would call a classic defect, but there are all sorts of feedbacks that you may need. Um, questions, uh, new requirements, just ways that the screen looks, ways that um, it could be done to make my job easier, all these things on top of what would be a standard defect. So we need to allow the user, even though it has to be simple, because these people generally aren't um, IT people, we have to allow the user the ability to express themselves whilst collecting all the information that we need to allow the more professional uh, IT teams to, to resolve the issues. So one of these things, as we mentioned, is standardization. So if we can get away where the UAT manager can rely on the reports and the feedbacks being given to them from the field of all these users, many of whom they won't personally know, possibly even in separate countries and separate time zones, um, if that's not there, then that's going to lead to real inefficiencies. And ultimately, what you know, why are we doing this? Uh, because we need um, the quality to be correct. So to allow the quality to be correct, we need to at least give some scope to the people testing it of what we want. So if you're just sending out a manual spreadsheet, it may have some descriptors in there. Um, it may be more open. But it could be end up with somebody, once again, this is a valid type of testing if you do exploratory testing. However, you may need to guide some of your users on what you want. So it could well be that they own the sales order process and they're the expert in that area. So not only does it have to work, but it has to work well and it has to allow them to be able to do their job properly. So quality is baked in, not just as in there are no defects, but as in this will support my job. This is a business driven thing and it will make my life easier. And then allowing all that to come together, we get the visibility. So as a UAT manager, managing all these people that potentially, as I said, across different time zones, different countries, different departments who don't work together, pulling that all into one single unified truth um, it is incredibly important. Without that, you're going to spend half your time trying to chase people up with emails, telephone calls, trying to pull together different bits of spreadsheets to give a report that really you should have at your fingertips. I, I like I like this one. Uh, thanks, Johnny. Uh, so, bottlenecks, um, bottlenecks, or or is it becoming a straw? Uh, and and the reason I, I say that at the, at, you know today is, yeah, digitalization. Those organisations with uh, you know sort of I'll say a robust strategy. It's part of their strategic vision to to move towards digitalization. Major application changes are only increasing. The speed of application change is only increasing, and and ultimately, what does that create? More and more and more and more data. Um, so, 
it may be a bottleneck today, but we're trying to get it go from once a month, twice a year, um, as, as many of our organizations do now, they're in weekly testing and release cycles. What does that produce? Mountains and mountains of data. So the data mountain is just gonna grow, it's gonna grow um, significantly. Um, I think if you press the next button down, Johnny, yeah, they, yeah, I'm glad that was the first one I started to talk about data mountain. So that data mountain is only going to go and grow, which brings that sort of complexity into managing things, I'll say semi manually with with Excel becomes more difficult. You know, once we've updated something like Excel, it's out of date because I've just updated it, but I've got other work that's going on. So it's it, it's a snapshot at a point in time. Um, so it's only practically, you know, it, normally it's practical, it's managed by an individual, a couple of people within the organization, normally the UA team manager, um, users feeding back into it, it's slow, it's clunky. So that data mountain is only going to go and grow. And I'm sure we've all used large Excel spreadsheets where they've become, you know, very clunky, very slow. Um, and bringing in that sort of management to it, how do we cross reference? So how do we know what's being done? Understanding that sort of big picture, the helicopter view of everything, what's being done, where are the defects, where have they come from, what progress has been made. So how do we know what test I need to do? What's telling me what tests I need to go and perform? Has it been executed? Have I got all the tests? So does do those tools help us to drive our UAT process or is it more of an output and we're just reporting at the moment because some of those best practices the tools help us to drive the process ultimately they drive the behaviors of me carrying out that, that UAT what's being done when's it being done and simply what's not being done so what are the risks to being able to release um, which is you know nicely into that consolidating reporting it's there it's instantaneous and we're trying to drive the process um, how many times i've got a management meeting i need to update my uat spreadsheet to take it into the meeting um, and it's not been updated for a week or two weeks and i've got to retrospectively go back what's happened in that time you know have we have we uh, reported on some defects but we haven't actually gone back and done something about it so it really becomes important of the ability to be able to drive our process, report on it, but report on it for the right reasons and help, helps the business drive the right behaviours. Thank you, Carl. So, you. yeah, I mean, all, all really important points. Um, is there a better way to manage this? Well, let's go through a, a few things. So. To, to answer that question, we've got to look at what the key UAT goals are. So fundamentally, UAT, I mean, I have, I often work with teams and it is sometimes seen as the poor man of testing, but it's absolutely fundamental to uh, delivering a, a product with expected uh, values and benefits. Ultimately, even if the requirements were written okay, the development was done, the testing is done. If the end user is not happy with it for whatever reason, that's going to hit your efficiency of using it every day for the rest of the, the software's uh, life of that area. So to give you an example, if you're looking at a, an order entry type screen that is inefficient, difficult to use, bad user experience, that could be run thousands of times a day. And even if it adds five seconds on, that's thousands of times times five seconds. So this is not just about the development process. This is not just about getting software out, but it's about ensuring that your stakeholders understand what's coming and um, it hits the objectives for them uh, and therefore carried forward through the entire work for the business. Not only does it work correctly, it works in the way that best supports your staff. Um, I mean, it goes without saying, without a centralized system, this is going to be very difficult to achieve. And when I say centralized system, anybody who's using this needs to be able to connect to it from anywhere, potentially now globally, uh, work on so many different projects that um, where teams are based in different areas, especially with this UAT style, because if you're looking at ERP implementations and the business is multinational, then it's bound to go over the different um, countries. So you need 
a clear way for all this information to be brought together at your fingertips. And as Carl said, you know, if you don't update it for two weeks and then you've got a management report, it would be an absolute nightmare to try and pull this information together. But with release cycles uh, being done quicker and quicker uh, as the industry pushes it, it's even more important to allow this um, to be centralized so that everybody can see what's going on. Capture capability. Um, yes, capture capability. It, it's absolutely essential. It, it's, you know, the days where we, we're hitting print screen and trying to do markups with with like an arrow off the word. And some people know word, some people don't know word. Some people just do a, a simple sentence to describe something that's quite complex. Trying to bring all that together uh, in one simplified way of capturing what you're actually doing will massively increase uh, the efficiency of the entire process. Uh, and, and it's very much, so the example we give is like, um, the busy cobbler who doesn't have time to repair the children's shoes. If this area is neglected, the entire process will not be as good as it could be. Um, it needs to be seamless and accurate representation of the system's regular day-to-day -day activities through this process. But also, just to re-emphasize again, this is not just about product delivery. This is not just about IT. The results of your UAT will define how efficiently your users can use the software moving forward for the lifetime of that software. So it's absolutely vital that they get some kind of say in it. They look at it, they build into it, and they have some way of simple reporting back in a centralized fashion. So is there a better way to execute? Well, there are two key areas that we believe at Original Software will allow this to happen. One is the management platform. So as I said, people use um, sort of project or task-based systems, or they use some of the older QA systems that are quite cumbersome and technical, even some of the new ones um, that can be used for Agile. They're just not, they're not designed, they're not built with UAT management in mind. Um, so what do we need? We need simple organization of test assets for reuse, traceability, um, timetabling and planning, uh, provide users and testers with information they need as they need it, as they're running it. Um, simple reporting, feedback of issues, triage of results, support analysis and metrics. And the key thing is a, a UAT tester is very different to a QA tester. They want to log in, they want to see what they need to do, they want to get the information they want, they want to do, and they want to log out. That's it. Simplified allows them to, to get standardization and traceability into one central area. And the second part of a better way to execute is the capture. So if you could auto capture the screens and inputs, um, that in itself will save many hours of, of the user's time. And um, they're already, this is not their full-time job. This is something they've been asked to do. They may not be very happy about that. So if you can get something very quickly to pull all this information together where they don't have to do much, and then save that away, this is going to help them. They're going to be more open to helping you because they spend less time. Um, and it provides clear technical diagnostics to the team, the IT team that are functioning with it. So if you have clear results um, and issues and you're able to communicate with and recreate and understand them, then it's going to be far more painless uh, for the, both the UAT tester and the people running the UAT effort. So fortunately, um, Original Software does have solutions in this area. It's called Qualify AQM and Test Assist. Uh, we have lots of areas on our website that highlight how this works, how it can be pulled together, what it looks like. Uh, we're always happy uh, to give um, presentations or videos if you want to see how you can actually work with this system yourself and um, find a better way to execute your UAT. Thank you, Johnny. And I'm just looking at the clock. And that was, we started a little bit late, making sure everybody joined. That was 22 minutes. So um, yeah, we've timed it almost to what we said um, there. And um, yeah, just been looking at questions coming in as well. So thank you for um, some of those. I'll just try and bring them into uh, uh, the same question. So first question um what happens when capturing tests across different applications 
Yeah, so this is quite common. We it's, it's actually rare now where you have one system that does everything for you. It's more. I was going to say gem- that. Yeah. yeah, it's generally part of a bigger picture, and there could be multiple applications. And whether we like it or not, one of those could be I need to open up this spreadsheet to find a piece of information. Uh, so what original software did is they made it so that the um, you can actually, it doesn't matter what the application is, you can just jump from one to another and it will still continue to capture the story as you want it. Um, So you can get true end to end sort of picture of what is going on for the UAT across different systems. Um, And when you you couple that with uh, the ability to actually pull these tests together and line them up one after another, um, it becomes quite powerful. So, for example, in Japan, you're doing the, the product inventory into a warehouse and delivery, and then you're doing a sales order out of the US. Um, these people will be able to see what the previous person has done in the test and the data that's available for them to continue. Okay, thank you. Um, another, another one interesting. What about UAT, where the user has no access to a PC? Yeah, actually, this is more common than you would think. So uh, we do a lot of logistics companies um, and they have warehousing operatives who use RF guns or or they're just picking uh, and stacking. So what we've allowed to do with our solution is you can actually run it on a tablet if you wanted um, and you can just have a list of steps that you need to go through and then you can just click on them on the screen of the tablet, say, yeah, that worked, yeah, that worked. No, that didn't work, here's the description. And it will still all get sucked into the centralized system. Obviously, you're not going to have the screenshots because um, you don't have a PC to take the screenshots on, but it will give you a full record of all the steps that you've done, what happened at each step. And, and, and for some people, that, that's enough. And, uh, and so we can do it that way as well. Um, yeah, a couple more. I'm just looking at the time. We've got a couple of minutes, so we, we might as well use it. Um, so what happens if I want to report actual defects into another system, um, for example, Jira? Yeah, we, we have a lot of customers who, who want to do this type of thing, you know, DevOps, Jira, TFS. There, there's a whole uh, slew of different uh, systems that people want to do that. Uh, the original software solution is built with open architecture. Um, so it's easy if you want to, and there's, there's multiple, we can talk about this multiple ways of implementing it, but it's easy if you want to, to once you've given the feedback that you say is an issue, if that then gets triaged and says, yes, it is an issue, we can auto create the defect in, in any one uh, of a number of systems, including JIRA. Excellent. Thanks. And then a, uh, yes, we have time, 28 minutes past. So. What's our advice on the transition from spreadsheets to using a dedicated UAT tool? Yeah, the the key to this one is simplicity. It's built, the original software built and designed UAT from the ground up. So we know the troubles that our customers were having trying to use QA systems um, and trying to manage all of this. So it's been built so that there is very limited training needed Um, As far as the end user is concerned, all they need to do is log on. They'll see a list of activities they need to do. Mm -hmm. They'll need to start the activity. It will auto record everything that they're doing, and then they just save it. And and that's pretty much it. So for them, it's actually going to be easier and less time consuming. So when you start talking about how we're going to implement this uh, via me going onto some kind of spreadsheet that may be held somewhere on a centralized system, it's actually going to be easier for them. So that's yeah. the easy part. It becomes um, part of the process, doesn't it? Yeah, and, it, and it's a part of the process yeah. that enables them to do their job yeah. more efficiently and better. So that that's never an issue. People are generally out open and receptive to that. For the management side, there is a little bit of training. Um, to do just to talk about looking at agile boards and managing the different tasks and the different processes that come across Um, and you know we we can handle that as well so what we say is we do it in a nice easy implementation fashion we have centralized database we have maybe one one hour training session with the end users which we can record and for the managers we work with them as and when they need it thank you and it's right on the half past in the uk so keeping it to that 30 minute mark doesn't take too much time out of everybody's day. Uh, yeah, once again, thanks. Uh, thank you for everybody attending. Um, brilliant to see customers and new people in attendance. We will be having another webinar in October. So look out for those communications coming through. Uh, and as I said before, the session has been recorded. Links will be sent out and, uh, and we'll make that available. So time-wise, we are 
our time wise is up so thanks once again everybody thank and, you uh, enjoy the rest of your day take care bye bye bye